Shalom and blessings, my Hebrews and Shebrews. This is Oilfield Disciple, and we're going to discuss a few things. Um, as per my last video, uh, what Henri means that was above Jesus' head when he was put on the stake. Um, I had, had a short conversation um, below that um, with my brother John Aishi, and um, discussing that how um, followers of, of God who call themselves Christians or whatever you call yourself, how we get this um, idea in our heads that certain things in Scripture is for the Jews. Um, and I made that comment that I get tired and wore out of people um, using that in conversations when we're talking about, about our Father that, well, we don't have to do this no more. That was for the Jews. And, th and that text and that scripture, that was for the Jews. Um, and so I simply asked them, I said, okay, well, what does Jew mean to you? What, what do you mean when you say that's just for the Jews? And that usually stumps most people. Because they, they give you that look like, uh, I, uh, I don't know, you know, and, um, and so I have to, I have to go and, and break this down, um, what Jew means and how misguided and misled people really are. Um, so I'm going to read a, a, a little bit of scripture here and I want, as I read this, I want y'all to understand that, um, when we read, read Revelation, um, and the events that are in the Revelation, um, some people uh, will claim that Revelation is just a metaphorical book, and that's not the case. Um, the way I understand it and the way I see it um, through my studies, uh, when John was taking um, to see all these events with by the messenger angel, um, he was seeing things in the future that he had no idea of, of what things were. Um, he had nothing to even compare anything to, um, like tanks and fighter planes. And, and we don't know how far into the future um, we're going here whenever John's talking on this. We can only um, understand our, um, the events and, and the equipment that we have today. Um, John could, if, if Jesus tarries, another 100, 200 years, there's no telling what the technology mankind's going to have at this point. Um, we can't fathom. I mean, look at our computers, how fast they're just, uh, you buy a computer today and a year from now, it's outdated and it's worthless to use. You've got to buy a new upgraded computer or buy a program to upgrade that computer. We're, our knowledge is growing by leaps and bounds. Um, and so give it another 100, 150, 200 years if Jesus tarries that long, what what did John really see here? We don't really understand that point of it. So we have to put ourselves in a mind frame that um, not only was John describing what, trying to describe to the best of his ability, um, what he had to compare in his, his day and time to some of this um, technology and equipment. Not only that, we have to understand that revelation is not chronological. Um, from, from chapter 1 to um, chapter 14, that's one telling of it. Then from 14 to 22, it's more like a retelling from a different perspective. Okay, and, and I'm fixing to read chapter 7 because we're going to get back to what are the Jews. I don't want to get too far off topic here. Um, what are the Jews? Well, the Jews are one tribe of the 12 tribes of Israel. Plain and simple. Let's don't make that complicated. Um, Jesus came from the tribe of Judah. Uh, Judah is the, one of the, the sons of Jacob um, that we get the, the word Jew from. And um, the word that, that my brother John used, let me look here, because I had to go look it up. I wasn't real sure what it was, um, what it meant. And so I went and done, done a little due diligence and looked it up. Um, he used the word di um, disambiguation. And I thought, what in the world is disambiguation? Well, so I went and looked it up. 
and it says it clearly it's a word that means to clearly identify what word is being re referenced when several different meanings can be applied to that one word in this instance the word Jew okay what are we talking about when, when, when we talk about the Jews what are you talking about when you say well that's not for us that's for the Jews Do you know what you're talking about um, so in Genesis chapter 49 it gives a list of Jacob's 12 sons these 12 sons are in order according to Genesis 49 uh, Reuben Shimon Levi Yehuda, Issachar, Zebulun, Dan, Gad, Naphtali, Asher, Joseph, and Benjamin. Benjamin. Okay. Um, Deuteronomy 33, 6 through 25 gives another list. Same list. When we get to Revelation, it gives a list of the 144,000 that will be sealed. 12,000 from each tribe. If you notice on that list, Dan is missing. Dan has been replaced. Not only Dan, but Levi. Dan has been replaced uh, by Manasseh. Levi's, or, uh, let's see. Dan was replaced by Ephraim. Oh, I got that wrong. My, my apologies. Dan was replaced by Manasseh, and Levi replaced by Ephraim. Okay, I'm not going to get into that too much right now. I'll make another video on that later. Um, of those 12 sons, they came from two of his wives, two of Jacob's wives, Leah and Rachel, and two sons, or and two handmaids um, produced four sons of the 12. So from Leah... Jacob's sons were Reuben, Shimon, Levi, Judah, Issachar, and Zebulun. From Rachel, Joseph, and Benjamin. Just two. From the sons of the two handmaids, he had Bilhah, which was Rachel's handmaid, and we have Dan and Naphtali. From Zilpah, which is Leah's handmaid, we have Gad and Asher. Okay, now, if... if if we go back to um, in the book of Genesis and we look at the marriage that um, Jacob um, worked his seven years for, he was working for Rachel. But he wound up through um, being beguiled, being deceived. Um, his first wife, he married Leah. And he wasn't real happy about that. He's like, hey, wait a minute. I worked for Rachel. Um, but the father of Rachel and Leah said, yeah, but Leah is older and we need to get her married first. So Jacob winds up working another seven years um, to be able to marry Rachel. But the cool part of that was is he didn't have to wait the seven years. He, he married Rachel at the end of the seven days. Um of the feast of the wedding feast that Leah and Rachel um, that he where he married Leah um, I know this can get confusing because you're like what what that's too many names let me read this quick insert of, of Revelation 7 and we're going to talk about something now now check this out it's going to be quite lengthy video because I, I call I want to make sure that we're clear on this and so, this is going to be a lengthy video. Get you a cup of coffee, pause the video, get you a cup of coffee, uh, get you a, a Dr. Pepper, sit out on the porch, whatever you do, hang tight with me. This is going to be a good video, it's going to be a good teaching, um, and we're going to explain quite a bit of things. We're going to look at some prophetic stuff, and um, we're going to see if we can clear some stuff up that will either help you understand where you're at, or help you um, explain it to someone else because we're all supposed to be disciples. Um, this information that we get is not supposed to be just locked up in our head and and go about business as usual. Um, in the in the story of the talents, Matthew 25, 
uh, the dude that had the one talent and went and buried it, he was called a wicked servant. Let's not be a wicked servant. Let's get God's information. Let's get God's knowledge and wisdom put into us. And then let's go and, and, and give it away. Let's go in and make more of what God's given us. You feel me? All right, let's flip the camera around and let's read what, what I'm reading. So, prepare for a lengthy video. All right, I'm going to read chapter 7. And I have highlighted the 12 sons that are listed there. And then over here I've um, listed some important stuff. Chapter 7 says, And after this I saw four messengers standing at the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth. The wind should not blow on the earth, nor the sea, nor any tree. And I saw another messenger coming up, from the rising of the sun, holding the seal of the living Elohim. And he cried with a loud voice, the four messengers to whom it was given, to harm the earth and the sea, saying, Do not harm the earth, nor the sea, nor the trees, until we have sealed the servants of our Elohim upon their foreheads. And I heard a number of those who were sealed, 144,000 sealed out of the tribes of the children of Israel, of the tribe of Yehudah, 12,000, tribe of Reuben, 12,000, the tribe of Gad, 12,000, Asher, 12,000, Naphtali, 12,000, Manasseh, 12,000, Shimon, 12,000, Levi, 12,000, Yissachar, 12,000, Zebulun, 12,000, Joseph, Yosef, 12,000, and Benjamin, 12,000 were sealed. <coughs> After this, I saw after this, I looked and saw a great crowd, which no one was able to count, out of all the nations, tribes, peoples, and tongues, standing before the throne, and before the Lamb, dressed in white robes, palm branches in their hands, crying with a loud voice, saying, Deliverance belongs to Elohim, who sits on the throne, to the Lamb. And all the messengers stood around the throne, and the elders, and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne. And worship Elohim, saying, Amen. The blessing, the esteem, the wisdom, the thanksgiving, and the respect, the power, and the might to our Elohim forever and ever. Amen. One of the elders responded, saying to me, Who are the dressed in white what robes, and where did they come from? I said to him, Master, you know. He said to me, These are those coming out of the great distress having washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Okay, I made a, a comment right there. It says, Sanctified saints, redeemed by grace, through Yeshua, guided by the Holy, by His Holy Spirit. Okay, back to the Scriptures. I'll explain in a minute. Because of this, because of this, they are before the throne of Elohim and served Him day and night in His dwelling place. And He who sits on the throne shall spread his tent over them. Okay, now, now keep that in mind. This is before the, th these are the, before the throne of Elohim, not before like prior move, at. And they serve him day and night in his dwelling place, and he who sits on the throne shall spread his tent over them. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst, neither shall the sun strike them with nor any heat. Look at that in Yeshayahu 49.10 or Isaiah 49.10. Because the Lamb who sits in the midst of the throne shall shepherd them and lead them to fountains of waters of life. Jeremiah 2.13 and 17.13 And Elohim shall wipe away every tear from their eyes. Yeshayahu 25.8 Alright, now then if we come down to 8, I'm not going to read it all, but I'm going to read verse 3. Another messenger came and stood at the slaughter place holding a golden censer, and much incense was given to him that he should offer it with the prayers of all the set-apart ones upon the golden slaughter place, the holy ones, which was before the throne. And smoke and incense with the prayers of the set-apart ones went up before Elohim from the hand of the messenger. Skip down to verse 8. A second messenger sounded, and what looked like 
a great mountain burning with fire was thrown into the sea, and a third of the sea became blood. Hold that thought. I'll come back to it. Verse 13. And I looked, I heard an eagle flying in mid-heaven, crying with a loud voice, Woe, woe, woe to those dwelling upon the earth, because of the remaining blast of the trumpet of the three messengers who are about to sound. Okay. Let's get y'all up here, flipped around. I, I got to drive on and get, get moving here. But let's look at this for just a minute before... Before I flip y'all around, let's, let's come back to me. Uh, like I said, I really want y'all to get this. This is um, this is a, a complicated passage if we look at it in the in in the way of chronological order um, and our way of understanding time. In seven thirteen, when it said that those are the ones dressed in white who um, stand at the throne, uh, bow at the throne, serving God day and night, being shepherded by the Lamb, right? Okay, you can go back and read that and look at that. Chapter 8 says, The set-apart ones of the golden slaughter plagues. Prayers of the set-apart ones. Verse 4. Verse 8, A great mountain burning with fire. Now, you can go do your research on this. I have already. Um, mountains and in Scripture, a lot of times, is going to be referring to a um, religious system, a uh, not necessarily church. Sometimes it can be the church, um, depending on the text, depending on the context. Um, in this verse, you go do your own diligence on it. I already have. A great mountain... Burning with fire was thrown into the sea. What I understand about that is that is a religious system that is being overthrown. And it is a wicked religious system. And I'm going to go out on a limb here. Um, and say that this religious system is Christianity. Holy Roman Catholic. Um, believings. Um, the Catholic Church. In this passage, we have to remove our understanding and element of time. You've got to if you're going to understand this. Um, I know that can be quite difficult um, to comprehend. Um, but like I tell my wife a lot of time, this is a fourth dimensional way of thinking. And we're not accustomed to it. We're so trained with things that the way they are that coming out of certain ideas... Like time, for example, is, is quite complicated. And, and I thank y'all. I, th I thank you, Lord, with all of my heart that you've given me that comprehension to be able to remove time and understand certain passages like this one. Um, so remove time. Um, go back and look at my video on on death. When we die, where do we go? Um That'll help you understand where I'm at right here talking about this. I've made a video on that already. Uh, and I, if I go back into it, it's, it's just going to prolong this video even longer. Um, so, the ones that have been redeemed by the Lamb, which all of us have been redeemed by the Lamb. Let's, let's not get into a separation there. Let me flip y'all around and um, y'all see what I see in, in and try to stay with me here. Uh, when it comes to salvation, I believe and I trust through Scripture that um, God has already set and designed those who will be um, redeemed. Those who are going to have their names in the Lamb's Book of Life. That's already set. That's already set. Um, but I do believe because of, um, what is that, uh, Matthew, where it talks about um, the ten virgins. Five of them were at the door ready to go in with their lamps trimmed and plenty of oil. Five of them did not have enough oil. They had to go back into town. 
and retrieve that. When we look at oil in scripture, equate that with um, obedience. If I have enough oil in my lamps, it's because I'm, I'm an obedient servant. Uh, I may have just said disobedience. Oil is obedience. So, the more I, I the more I understand Scripture, the more I follow Scripture and, and and walk in repentance and walk in righteousness. The more obedient I am to Christ, the more obedient I am to the Father. Uh, so come that day, should it come this coming week um, at Sukkot, I believe that'll be the only time the Lord can come is during the year in the year. It, will be at Sukkot because right there it said the angels the remaining trumpet blast has yet to sound it woe to those inhabitants of the earth a lot of people will like to have you believe that the church has been removed at that point it's not the case no way is that the case uh, God's church is Israel. Now this is where I'm going to get back to what you mean by Jew. God's chosen people is Israel. The Hebrew Israelites. Whether you are naturally born an Israelite or you are an adopted child who has become an Israelite. That's his church. There is no separate church beyond Israel. The Christians do not have um, the market cornered when it comes to being God's chosen people. Understanding the 12 tribes, there were 10 northern tribes and 2 southern tribes. The southern tribes are Judah and Benjamin. The 10 northern tribes are the rest. The other 10... The other, the other listed there. Now Ephraim and Manasseh comes in there. Um, another, another video for another time. God has divorced the Northern Kingdom at this point in our understanding of time. Right now, God has divorced the Northern Kingdom due to their rebellion and disobedience. Judah, which is the Jews, and Benjamin, Benjamin are the southern kingdoms who God has not necessarily divorced, but due to their rebellion and disobedience, um, they're kind of pushed to the side right now. Christians would like to have you believe that Judah, and which are the Jews, and Benjamin have been removed from God's chosen people, and now... They have come in. That's like saying I've adopted some children and my natural born children, I boot out of the house. It's not the case. Now, my natural born children um, are in punishment right now. But my adopted in children are being rebellious. And Their consequences and punishment are coming. But they're still my children nonetheless. Because I've adopted them. I love them. That still makes them. Mine. That still makes them. Uh, in the house. Natural, uh, drafted in. Romans chapter 12. Go read it. We don't get to be separate. We are either in the house of Israel. With salvation. Or we're going. Uh, Gentiles. If you're Gentiles. Well then. You have no promise. You have no inheritance. You had better be. An adopted child. To God. You feel me? Are, are you still with me to there? Okay. So when we. 
when we jump up and say, well, I don't have to do that because that's for the Jews, we have just um, disconnected ourselves from the inheritance. And we don't want to do that. That's not good for us. It's very bad that we would do that. Um, whether we like to admit or not, we're very anti-Semitic. We want to say, yes, protect the Jews, protect the Jews, protect Israel. But at the same time, when the scriptures talk about doing something, when God is laying out his laws and commands for us to do, we want to disconnect ourselves from that and run from it. And that's a lie that has been spun through the Holy Roman Catholic Church from the early centuries uh, 